is to continue and examine the Properties window, which we indicated is typically located in the lower right-hand side of your screen. You can also choose the View option to view the Properties windows or F4 to launch that window. As you know, we're in an ASP.NET application, so let's take a look at the design view for that application and see what we can do to manipulate it. Select Default ASPX and select Design. Let's examine how the Properties window works in conjunction with all the other tools that are available within Visual Studio 2008. If you look at the Properties window, the first thing you'll see at the top is a drop-down list. This iterates through all the elements that are located on your screen. In this case, our screen is showing default ASPX. In default ASPX, we have two objects, the base document object as well as a form object. Let's add another element by selecting the toolbox option and dragging over a button. As you can see, based on the element that has focus on my screen, the properties window will change. In this case, because we dragged over a button, the button properties are now exposed. By default, they're sorted by category. If you prefer, you can choose to sort the properties alphabetically by clicking on the A to Z button, which is the second button from the left. By default, the properties window will go to the property that's most commonly used. In this case, for a button, this is the text property. By changing the properties right within this window and selecting Enter, I can see that my design surface also reflects the change. So the properties window isn't just a way of viewing properties, but it's also an easy way of manipulating them as well. I can also do the same thing through code. The properties window provides me a visual way to work with elements in my project. I can also take a look at events by clicking on the lightning bolt. These are events that belong to the button, such as the click event, which is the most often used one. Hence, the properties window automatically navigates to the click event. By double clicking on the blank area, this will pop me right into the default ASPX.VB code behind file and provide an event delegate called button one underscore click. This could be any name, but it's usually a good practice to name it something that makes sense. Because I'm handling the click event for a button one object, I should use a button one underscore click event. As you can see at the end, it says button one dot click. I can change this name to be anything that I'd like. And if I go back to my design surface, I can see that the properties window now reflects that event delegate right within the properties. I can also manage my user interface using my properties window. By selecting the category option, I can take a look at the different options that I have to manipulate this button. I can also choose to manipulate the user interface from the document level. For example, by clicking on the ellipsis for the background property, I can select a file that contains the image that I want to set for my background. This dialog is intelligent enough to know what property that I selected and only provide files that would be appropriate to set as a background. In this case, a GIF or a JPEG or a bitmap file. Cancel out. I can also set the background color. This will provide me with a color wheel that I can use to set color, and this will translate to different values that I can see in the window. I can also select the eyedropper to not only select a color from the color wheel, but I can also skip outside of that window and select different colors that I see in my entire solution. By clicking the eyedropper button, I now have that color captured as a new color that I wish to use for my background, and as you can see, the background will change. The Properties window also works with non-user interface controls. Click on the Server Explorer. Collapse the data connections and take a look at the different servers that you have available within your Server Explorer. If you expand the Services options, you have the ability to work with different services that run on your operating system. I can choose to start and restart these services right within my Server Explorer, and I can also see the different settings in my Properties window. Let's scroll down to SQL Server. By selecting SQL Server, I can examine in my Properties window all the properties that are applicable to this particular service. If I want to see what kind of dependent services that my SQL Server depends on, I can expand this node and scroll down in my Properties window and see that in order to run, SQL Server needs to use MS SQL Server Agent. This is very useful for working with not only your user interface, your Server Explorer, but all the various windows such as Solution Explorer using the Properties window. And as you can see, every time I click on a particular area, the Properties window will change to reflect the properties of whatever object that I click on.